Um, first of all, we're so sorry once again, obviously, having this come to you. Can you tell us how you are, how the affairs are? Yeah, um, I think one or two might be a little bit, you know, I think when it's, whilst everybody expects um, the worst, it, you know, it's um, when it happens, you know, I got a phone call last night at, uh, in the evening and uh, um, it, it was it was strange really, you know, I think it, obviously it, it, it brings the family peace and I think that's what we've got, you know, offers them comfort, doesn't it? Um, that's what, you know, Sharon, Sharon said uh, right from the start, it, it gives them comfort in that respect but um, uh, I, the answer to your question I don't really know because I've not really been with the players till we're training after this so I don't really know the, one or two have always been a little bit you know uh, sensitive and I suppose it's, it's having time to process it I mean while everybody expected the worst there was still while there was an ending I suppose there was still a time little element of hope so it's a bit of a double edged sword I guess yeah it is it is and uh, and, and you know, I don't think you, I don't think you can say much more about it. It's 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 what it is, and we have to we have to carry on. Have you had a chance to have any contact with your with the family at this stage? Or will you be having any contact? With you? I spoke to Missy, um, uh, who uh, was the agent, the French agent, last night, because um, he's been keeping me involved, and um, and he was, you know, he's telling me about the family. So I think our conversation really has got to be kept private, really. Yeah, I mean that's the least of my worries—the record signing. I think it, it, the finance doesn't come into it from my point of view. It's it's the human, and, and I think when we've said about brings the family peace uh, and comfort, I think the same goes for the for the club. I think they've handled it unbelievable. I think I couldn't be more grateful to Mehmet and Ken. Um, the way they, you know, keeping everything together off the field, and it, it's been able, I've, it's been it's made it that I've been able to just concentrate on. Uh, Keeping the team together and things on the field of play, which is, which has been, you know, because it has been an amazing. Um, I think the, you know, the time limit and everything like that. They've been fabulous. Those two. Well, I, th I think when I think I've seen it all in football, I think that uh, our fans keep surprising me nearly every week now. It used to be every few months uh, when I first started, but it's almost every week now. I don't think there's anything that um, that would surprise me now with them. And I have to say, I think the you know Arsenal fans, the Bournemouth fans, I think everybody around, you know, you've seen all the tributes from all over the place, you know, from little clubs in the third, second, third division. Uh, the old third division, um, to the top clubs. And uh, and I think when something like this happens, it brings all the football family together, really. Does it make you glad to be part of the football family when you see everybody coming together like this? Um, I think, it, I think it, it shows that everybody's thinking on the same wavelength, really. That, that's the thing. I think, you know, it, it's, it's a loss to everyone. I know we're the closest, but it's a loss to everyone in football because... You know, when you look at the, for example, the the the, the finance that the, that they were able to just raise from world class players around the world in, in a space of a few hours to enable the search in the first place, which you know I found was amazing, really, and which I would have wanted to do if they were my, if it was my child, you know. So I, I think I think it's it's been unbelievable the response all, all the way around. I think I think they will do. I think we've just got to pay our respects now again uh, regarding uh, now now the situation has come to an end uh, in regarding uh, Emiliano. There's a fact that I think we should, you know, as normal wear black armbands and have a minute silence. I'm sure uh, things like that will be adhered to this weekend. Um, um, it, that you know, I think even the Southampton fans will will want that as well. And how about you? I mean, you've obviously liked 
so many people who have been battered by what's happened. Has it made you, I know you, you probably have taken stock, what, what sort of, where do you feel you are at this particular point in time with all the events that have happened? Yeah, I mean, my mind's been uh, back on football as well, um, as it's got to be. I, you know, I, I'm sort of steer the ship sort of thing, you know. Um, but I have to say the boys have been fabulous, and the staff. Kevin and Ron's been great to me and uh, and everybody in the staff-wise. Um, you know, Ken Chu, as I've said, he's been around all the time and uh, helpful. And and it, 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 does, it does matter when you're a team off the field as well as on it. It, it does make it easier. Um, and you know, the, the, I think you could see, even at Arsenal, you could see the response from the players. Probably the best game away from home against a top team that, that I've probably done. Um, and uh, I thought the Bournemouth game again was a, a very good game for us from our point of view, football-wise. So um, they can't, I can't really ask any more than that. I'm going to ask them again to lift themselves at Southampton as well. Well, I just want them the same attitude and the same play. I thought we played some good stuff, and I think that um, you know, it's, it, when they play like that, it's enjoyable to watch. Really, I, mean, I, I was stood on the line at Arsenal, and you know, loved every minute of it. Uh, even though I didn't enjoy the misses light, but um, in the, in in general, to you know, play against a side like that, I thought it was super. And uh, same on Saturday. I, ca I can't fault that. I don't think there'll ever be a question mark about me uh, faltering. Uh, f sorry, questioning. Um, the commitment of my players. I think that's what's got us here in the first place. Probably a little bit earlier than we thought, but um, I don't think that will ever be in question. They, they always give me everything. It might be limited at, at certain times, but um, they don't really get much criticism from me. Finally, from me, I appreciate it still very much a, a painful subject, but what would your personal tribute like to be to, to Emiliano? I just think he was a... He was a um, a Neil Warnock type of player, really. Um, he was. Uh, I always thought that um, he, he was a scruffy, a scruffy type of player that would, for me, score ten, fifteen goals every year at the top level. Um, but not just that. Work hard as a team player. You know, just fits the criteria really for what I look for in a player. Somebody that can do something special, but at the same time. He's a very good lad. He was a really nice lad. So uh, I think that that was uh, that would be my memory of him, and his clothes. Like his clothes. Sorry. Like his clothes. You his clothes were different. I've got a little bit like Omar, and today uh, he's come with some as well. There's two or three of them now. I think uh, fashionable. No, I know. I, I I have tried that in the past, but my daughter wears them as well now. So. Thank you very much. How you going? Just to pick up on that point, um, you met Emiliano. What kind of guy was he? What, what was his potential? Do you feel? As <clears throat> I think he'd, he, because he wasn't a, a young kid. You know, he was a lad uh, at, uh, at the prime. I felt, and I think he knew that he had things to prove. He, he'd been in a, 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 I could say, comfort zone in France. He'd, he'd improved every year in the last few years, and uh, I think he was just ready. He was a little bit fearful. Um, of the challenge ahead, um, but um, I think he was, you know, he knew that he had to try and make that step now and and see, because uh, I thought he could score goals in the Premier League and he did, you know. And I just said to him, you know, he's, it's it's probably easier coming to a club like Cardiff, where we've got such a good group of lads, than probably going higher to a group that's probably a little bit, you know, probably got more ability but not got the dressing room spirit. So. I thought that you know. I thought it had all the ingredients to mix, really, and uh, and I'm sure it would have done. And could you sense the excitement for him of coming to play in the Premier League? Yeah, I mean, originally, early on in the in the deal, it, there was there was a, a newspaper report about him not wanting to come. And when I first met him, I spoke to him about that, and he said that was ridiculous and never been said. I said, "Oh, that's the usual thing in England. You don't say that." And as a headline, so I said, "You get used to that in England." Facts never get in the way of a good story. And you call him a Neil Warnock type player. There was obviously something in his personality. Because that's a big thing for you, character, personality. There was something in there that you... Yeah, he had, he had, a, he had a dry sense of humour and, uh, you know, uh, his music tastes were, you know, I, I heard a couple of his tracks of his music. So he, he just, um, 
He's just a nice lad, really. I don't think I don't think anybody. I've, I've not heard anybody have a bad word to say about him. And just picking up on, on Fran's point about <coughs> your feelings now, that there were some suggestions this week that this could be an event that made you consider your future here. Mm. Is that still the case? Or is that I think I think that I think that was a little bit over the top. I just said it made you think about whether you want to carry on in football. I think that was the comment, probably. And as always, you know, you always get certain tabloids make a meal out of it. Uh, but I, I went in the local in in the local paper and and put that to bed. Really, um, you know, it's it's a challenge for me. Yeah, probably more of a challenge with all the things that's happened in the last few weeks. Um, but I, I think anybody that saw us play the last couple of games know that we're. I think we're all up for that. I think the players are up for that. I know I am, and and I know. Uh, Mehmet and Vincent are as well, so it's um, you know it's a challenge we've got to we've got to try and face head on. For the family and friends, obviously, the, the, the trauma of this will, will go on for a long time. For this football club, can you start to move on from this point? I think so. Yeah, I think everybody. You know, we all have um, you know things like this happen in our lifetime, and um, I think you, you just have to. You have to get on. You know, it's it it, it just moves on. Um, I don't think you ever forget things like this. I don't think it's something that you can just put at the back of your mind. You know, there are times uh, during the day and, and that I think about it, you know, certain aspects of this, you know, uh, of meeting uh, Imali, Imani or I could never say it. I used to say that to him. Um, so it, it's, you know, it's it's one of those things that we you have to, you know, you have to move on. And unfortunately for me, the players have, have grasped that, really, in the performances. And now I think we've got, you know, 13 cup finals now. And how much focus have you been able to give this Southampton game? And how do you view it now? Yeah, we, we've done a, a bit of work like we did last week. We had to work really hard on the, on the Bournemouth fixture because there's such a, you know, especially after the beating Chelsea 4-0. Um, my daughter asked me if I was trying to keep it to single figures uh, and my tactics. Um, but um, you have to work on, you try and work on what you think are your strengths and, and the opponent's weaknesses, and I'm sure they're doing the same with us. It's, it's, a, it's a, a difficult game for both of us. Um, you know, possibly um, clubs like Southampton and one or two of the other clubs didn't expect to be in the position that they're in, really, whereas we, I think we've always thought we would be around this area. So it's, you know, probably expectations are higher. But we we'll go there in good spirits and I'm sure we can give them a good game. And if you manage to win, you could move out of the relegation zone, which would be a tribute to the players here and their focus over the last couple of weeks. Absolutely, yeah. And that's what we're going to try and do. I mean, I don't think, you know, the next few games, I don't think there's any game that we shouldn't try and win. Um, and, and tomorrow's games, you know, the same as that, really. They're all important and... It's not going to define our season, but you know we, we want to get a good result really next on, on Saturday. Just finally, wider afield, um, there has now become what appears to be, to some people, a slightly unseemly dispute between two clubs over money. Has that disturbed you over the last few days? That's become well, as I said earlier, I think it's it's uh, it could, I couldn't be more grateful to Memo and Ken because they they're keeping everything away from me. And, and, and uh, I think off the field they're dealing with all that, and I think that's the that's the way to move forward. I think I've got enough on my plate, trying to get things on the field of play. So, but they they've been I think pretty amazing really with the press and everything else over the last few weeks. Thanks,